Okay. <clears throat> um, do you know what ugokase means? Ugokase. Is it to um kind of like scream? That's a good guess, but ugokase is to make something move. Mm. Ugokase from ugoku to move. Ugokase. How can you change ugokase, which means to make something move, into potential form, which is to be able to make something move? To be able. Um, Hi. Ugoka redu. Hi. Ugoka. And redu is a good guess. However, modoru, which is an u verb, ends with r u. Ugokasu is also an u verb, but it ends with s u, s u, which makes su. So the way how a potential form is made is that what you do is that you replace that final u sound with e. So rather than um do, it becomes I mean rather than de, it becomes se. So ugokaseru. To be potential form. How can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Hi. Uh Torobo Torobo wa me no my no mono o keseru. Hi. So kesu is to make something disappear. What do you think keseru means? Uh to be able to make something disappear. Exactly. So what do you think this sentence means? Hi. Uh, Dorobo, which is like magic rock. Good guess. Dorobo is actually a thief. Mago Seki is magic rock. Hmm. Dorobo wa ne no mai no so we start at disappear, um, to be able to disappear. Right. No, mono. So disappear thing. Right. Who is doing My... this action? Who is making something disappear, or who can make something disappear? Ah, Dorobo. Hi, hi, hi. So the thief hi. can make what disappear? Mono, so I, thing. Yes, yeah, so a thief can make thing or things disappear. What what kind of things can they make disappear? <clears throat> Men no my. So what's in front of their eyes? Exactly. So everything they can see. Yep, perfect. So now that you know what this means, I want you to make the sentence the magician can move their magical stone. So first off, we want to start with who's doing the action, which is the magician. Mm -hmm. What's that in Japanese, do you think? The magician. Uh, maho, that's magic. Mahoji, no. Hi. So you do actually yeah. have a vocab list here of different words you can select. You can select mado seki, majutsushi, or ugokasu. Mm, majutsushi. Hi. Majutsushi. Hi. What? what part of yeah. Hi. And what are they moving? Then at the end, we would do, 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 do. So it would be okokasu, okokasu, which is supposed to be okokareru, no, okokayeru. So with conjugation okay. in Japanese. You're, there's certain parts that are never going to change, mostly. So, for example, if something ends with a su sound, most likely you're going to have an s left over, and it's actually u. Ugo ka, s plus u. And the u is what's going to change for the majority of conjugations. The only exception for this, I believe, is teflon. Hmm. So it's ugu kas, ugu kas. Ukukasu. Okay. Yeah, so, Uku kase. Hi. Uku so just on its own, Ugo kase is not potential form. That's actually imperative form. What do you think we need to add to Ugo kase to make it into potential form? 
could look at the example sentence above with keseru from kesu. So it would be ugu kaseru. Right. Exactly. Ugu kaseru. Perfect. And how about the object, the magical stone? How are we going to add that in here? That would be um, madoseki o. Yes. Perfect. Yep, so that is the magician can move their magical stone. The only thing here that has to be in the position is this one. This one has to be at the end, and you're correct for that. These two could be switched if you wanted to. You could say, Mado seki o, majutsushi wa ugo kaseru. And that would have the same meaning as, majutsushi wa mado seki o ugo kaseru. So these two mm -hmm. orders do not matter because we have particles. That's why particles are such a big thing in Japanese, is that it allows you to have a lot of movement. Verbs don't have particles, so you cannot move them around. Does that kind of make sense? So, yeah. Okay. So now you have an example sentence to read. Start from the beginning. Let's go. Ore wa suritakara te o or it's suritakara te o tsubuyaku. Hi. So our first clause or baby sentence is this one. Ore wa suri da. Do you know what suri meant? It's very similar to dorobo. Ore wa suri da. So it's like not a thief, but it's a pickpocketer, I think. Yes, it's a pickpocketer. Hmm. <laughs> Nice. So what does that mean? Ore wa surida? So I'm a pickpocketer. Exactly. And then what's this kara meaning? And it's coming after a da, which means it comes after a clause. So it's like because? Hi, because I'm a pickpocketer, what can they mm. do? Uh, start at the end. Ukukaseru. Able to disappear. What does ukukasu mean? Ukukasu, to move. Hi, 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 to be able to move, yes. Hi. Mm. Uh, tsubuyaku. Tsubuyaku. Is that like immediately? That's a good, it's very similar to that. Tsubuyaku is swiftly. So it's a fast and smooth mm. movement. So to move quickly. Hi, but okay. it's, it's, it's swiftly so... is the best word for that. Because it means it means quick, but it also means smooth. So you can move quickly and like knock okay. 20 things down off the table. Mm. That's not subayaku. Subayaku is moving quickly and not hitting anything by accident. It's doing it smoothly and fast. So swiftly is one of those kind of words that conveys both. <laughs> what are they move swiftly? So, okay. The hands. So, or so. the pickpocket's hands. Right. And do you know what the she is doing here? She. So is that just like connecting the next sentence? Basically, it is a kind of and. And this and is would in English would really just be and, but it's used when you're listing proof of something. So this is kind of like proof for why he is um for for why he is such He's similar to why thieves are similar to um, magicians, perhaps. So, for example, because I'm a thief, blah, 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 blah. Your other argument could be it's because he's a thief. This is some proofs of information for that. But basically, mm. it's it's used for when you're listing examples. But in English, we don't really have an and that conveys that same meaning. So in translating, you just would say and in most cases. Um, so he said, because I'm a thief, I can move my hands swiftly. And what else can they do? Men no my, men no my, no one no. Okay, so kesu 
to disappear or mono so make things disappear hi and what tense is kesiru oh, in mono, hi so it's not kesu kesiru hi looks pretty similar to ugo kaseru doesn't it mm -hmm. so it's oh to be able hi hi yep so you're able to make things disappear. Hi. And what kind of things? Oh, mono. Men or my. So anything in front of your eyes. Perfect. So the tenth form of kesu is keshite. Kesu? Keshite. Keshite. I can see this one right here. Luck. It's nice and it keeps that S in both of these. So this is S plus U, and the other one is S plus I. Okay. So our next thing is Miseru. Miseru does come from Miru, which means to see. And passive is like, and it's literally the passive form kind of, of Miru. It's, it's a little bit different. It's its own thing, but it probably comes from that. So it's like to make somebody see. Um, and it basically, it means to show somebody something, to show, to put do in front of somebody. Mm. So, for example, can you read this sentence for me? Right. So, I will show what? So, I will show. Oh, I guess the thief will. Uh, what's that? Oh, hi. B. What? We'll show mono. We'll show a thing in front of eyes. So basically, he will show you something in front of him. Well, there is another verb here that's not just me, Sedu. Right here. Kashite. Oh, kashite. Hmm, what does that verb mean? Kashite. Kashite. Hmm. Kesu, kashite. So, te form for making something disappear. So, so. So, te form in Japanese is used for a lot of different kinds of conjugations. It has to do with tenses, basically, or describing how you do something. So, a lot of times you kind of make these almost compound verbs with te form. So you have miseru to show, mm. you're using that to describe kesu, which is to disappear. So you're not just making something disappearing, you're showing somebody you disappearing something. So you're showing this action, Hi. the kesu. So I will show you me making something disappear right in front of your eyes. I will make a thing disappear right in front of your eyes. Or the thief will make a thing disappear right mm. before your eyes. So the miseru and men no mai is kind of just doing double duty here, saying, before our eyes, I will make something disappear, and I can show you it. Uh, what is the te form of kesu to make something disappear? Kesu, so it would be mishite. Hi, kesite. Nice. So something you may have like noticed sometimes when you see in Japanese, but sometimes certain particles do not want to touch verbs. They think they have cooties. They're like, ew, I will not touch that. So instead, you kind of have to mm. add something to act as a breather between like certain particles and verbs. So some particles don't care. To doesn't care. Kwa cares a lot. Mm. It does not want to touch verbs. They hate verbs. Um. So because of that, you're going to probably add either koto or no. And which one you use depends on context. Um, koto is used to kind of the generalize something. Um, someone has described it before to me as a photo booth, a photo book of pictures, and no as a single picture. So with koto, you were talking about either multiple occasions of an event or the idea behind the event, I kind of. So if I said, Subuyaku ugokasu uh, koto wa muzukashi, this just means moving swiftly is complicated. I would say this is the most standardized version you would use because you're just saying, in general, it is quite complicated to move, compl move swiftly. 
In comparison, you could put no in here, but that changes the meaning quite a bit. When you add no here, you kind of talk about one specific occasion, like it's really complicated to move swiftly right now, or this specific movement I'm making is very hard to make swiftly, is what the no starts to insinuate. <clears throat> um, you will also see koto without a verb. For example, if you confess your love to somebody, you would say, name no koto ga suki, like um, Sam no koto ga suki, or Kimi no koto ga suki, something like that. And this is because you're generalizing mm. the person that you like, saying basically, I like everything about you. Rather than being specific, saying like, I like your name. And you're like, oh, okay, that, that's it. Ah, so, so. <laughs> so that, that, that's why koto is kind of used to generalize. I like everything about you. I love your hair or whatever. I love how nice you are. Mm. So earlier you saw kesu to te form. What do you think is ugo kasu in te form? Hi, exactly. Perfect. Um, so we've seen miseru to mean to show, and koto is one of those things that goes between things that don't like to touch verbs. Date, which is a way to say even. It, it, sometimes date can mean something else, so it depends on context. We just look similar. But this version of date is the even date. This guy right here does not like to touch verbs. It thinks verbs have cooties. So if you wanted mm. to add, even I can blah, 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 or even I will do this type of thing. Um, if you wanted to do that, you'd have to do date to convey that. Um, and then koto right here is so it's like things like this action. So we're talking about this action in general, rather than one specific occasion. So why don't we read this sentence? Ore wa machiusushi no madoseki o keshte miseru koto date. Right. You start with the subject, go all the way to the bottom, and then kind of go like that. Ore wa date. So even because I. I, I even. That's probably how we'd say that in English. Or oh, even I, I. I guess even I works good. I will even would be how I translate this because it's um will form here. I will even. I will even. Miseru. Or just koto first. Koto miseru. So I will see everything. Or... Mm, that's a good guess. So miseru means to show. To make someone else see, Hi. kind of. Oh. So I will show everything. I'll show this. So this is a generalizing of what you're showing. So I will show, in mm -hmm. English, we use the word things as a generalizer. I will show things like, or I will show things like, I feel like like is needed in here. So things like is our generalizer in English. Mm -hmm. uh, things like. Like what? What 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 do I do? Keshte. Keshte. Keshte o madoseki. So. Keshte o madoseki. So I will show disappearing Hi. magic rock. Yep, I will show, I will even show things like I making things disappear, like a, a magical stone disappearing. So yeah, it, it's a little bit hard because in Japanese, like in English, we wanted to throw in our subject again. And in Japanese, we didn't need to do it two times. But yeah, so it's I mm. will even do things like showing you me making things disappear. Uh, the things disappearing is the magical stone that belongs to a magician. So I can even mm. show you disappearing a magical stone. Okay. I'm going to skip that one. Okay, next is the word dekiru. Do you happen to know what dekiru means? It's a pretty dekiru. common word. Dekiru. It's like, I can do this. Hi. 
It is. Yeah. It is a verb that means I can do something. Um, so this right here, if you don't know how to conjugate um, potential form, you can always use dekiru with te form. Always. That That is the same thing. Um, the main difference is that dekiru can really only show once in a sentence, while pat, while um, potential form could come 20,000 times and it'd be fine. Um, what is mm -hmm. the te form of ugokasu? What does ugokasu mean? Do you remember? Ugokashite. Yes, ugokashite. And what does it mean? It means to move. Or, um, what was it? It was to be able to move. Uh, that would be potential form, which would be ugo, ugo ka seru. Ugo kasu is to make something move. So just like ke kesu, just like kesu, it has the word to make Hi. inside of it. So in English, we don't, we have, so in Japanese, you have these things called transitive and intransitive verbs. We don't really have that in English. Instead, our transitive versus intransitiveness uh, that's might not be the right words. Uh, but basically, uh, in English, if you want to give a verb an object, we can do this grammatically. In Japanese, they actually have separate verbs versus verbs that need objects and verbs that don't need objects. So object not needed mm. versus object verbs. So ugokase is a different verb than ugoku. ugoku. They're officially different verbs but they have the same kanji because they have the same meaning. But ugoku is the one that doesn't need an object and ugokasu does need an object. So ugoku means I move, I, I move around. Well, ugokasu means I move something, I move something around. And Japanese has a lot of these pairs that kind of do that different thing. So the, really the only difference is adding make, I make something move uh, is how I'm showing this different. So kasu, is to make something disappear. Kieru is its 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 um counterpart. Um, so kesu is to mm. make something disappear. Kieru is to thing itself just disappears. But this isn't conjugation going on. This is a separate word in the dictionary that is just related to each other. Versus in English, it's actually a grammatical rule of moving things about to allow whether or not a the word takes a object. So it is very confusing when you learn Japanese because this isn't something that really exists in English, um, at least not in the same way. So ugokasu is to move, but it's to move something. Hi. Okay. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Hi. wa me no mai no mono o keshite dekiru. What do you think this means? So, so I can dekiru. I can keshite. I can move. Mm, that's ugoku. What I does kesu move. mean? Oh, to disappear. Hi. Hi. Keshite o mono no mai no me. So I can make I can make something in front of my eyes disappear. Perfect. Nice. So now that you have the information, I want you to make the sentence the magician can move their magical stone, Hi. with the can being dekiru rather than um potential form. Mm -hmm. Um magical stone uh, is magi magi Yes. Uh, hi. Magitsushi wa. And then I would add dekiru at the end. Hi. To move the magical stone. So to move is ugakasu. Can move is. It is ugukakeru. No. Ugukase. Ugukaseru. So ugukaseru is to be able to make something move. Which, this is potential form. This is perfect. If you ended it with this, that would be the make something move. You don't really pile to make something move on top of to make something move. 
same in English. I want to say, I can mm -hmm. make move, I can make move. I can, can make move. It's a little bit odd. <laughs> so this right here, mm -hmm. you could definitely have done that to make the target sentence. But what I wanted to do was to make it by combining Google Kasu and um, Dekidu. Any idea how we can combine these verbs together? There's basically two ways how verbs are combined in Japanese. One of them is stem form and the other one is te form. Te form. So, ugukashite. Hi. That is how these two verbs are combined. So, ugokashite, dekiru. Has the exact same meaning as ugokaseru. You use one versus the other purely for aesthetics. Um, Dekiru is, mm. I guess you could describe as slightly more dramatic, but it's very slight. Basically, a sentence can only have one Dekiru, but it could have 20,000 Kasedus. And you want to use Dekiru if you can't conjugate to Kasedu. Like if you were stacking a lot of stuff and it would get confusing. But So what you have right here is the magician can make something move. How do we make that something into the magical stone? So we would do um mato seki o Yes. Where do we put this mato seki o? So go after at... the majitsu shi wa. Yes. You can put that there. That would be grammatically correct. You could have also put it in front of that. You could put it up here. This is also grammatical. Mm. So the sentences are the same. You will see these just as often in Japanese texts. Uh, the main thing that kind of decides it, where it goes, kind of has to do with whether or not there's a relative clause, which is a sentence basically being used to describe a noun. So sometimes they'll move things around so that it's easier to understand what's going on. Uh, or harder Hi. for us who are learning the language because we want it to be in a very strict order because English is order mm -hmm. strict. Um, in Japanese, this is the default order. So if I deleted the particles, you would have to do this in this order or it wouldn't make sense. And you will see people drop particles in natural speech, in which case, yes, it will follow this direct um, order. Okay. No. Do you remember what datte meant? Datte is like even if. Hi, hi, even. It, it's less even if, but more just like even, I guess. It's like even I. Just even. It's, it's just even. Because even if is mm. actually um temo. Which it changes the meaning just very slightly. Ah, temo, hi. Um, but mm. they're they're very, very similar. Do you remember what miseru meant? Uh, to show. Which is hi, good. hi, hi. Perfect. So now you get to read the actual line from our book. はい。俺はスリダからテオスブヤクウクカセルシメのマイのものを消してあ見せることだってできる。はい。So okay. first off is this section. So, I will So, I can move or I'm right. able to move. Subiaku. Did Subiaku mean? Subiaku is swiftly. Hi, swiftly. Swiftly. Oh, so I can move something very swiftly. My hands. I can move my hands very swiftly. Yes. Um. Dakara. So, I am a pickpocketer because I can move my hands very swiftly. It's the opposite. Because I'm a pickpocketer, I can move my hand. As you can see, kara is attached to this clause. So because Hi. I am a pickpocket. Okay, mm. so that's our first because two clauses. 
Yes. So our first two clauses are done. What's our third clause? <笑>を消して見せることだってきれい。はい。So I can だって so even if I can even I can or I can even no if I can even I, blank not if I can even ことを見せる so I can show things I can even show things. Keshte. Can even show things. Keshte. I can even show this action. What is the action? Hmm. Keshte. The keshte. I can even show disappearing. Hi. So disappearing, disappearing, or not disappearing things in front of my eyes. Perfect. Yep. Nice. So our next kanji we're learning, first one of today, is ishi, which, do you Hi. happen to know what ishi means? Ishi. ishi. Sounds like nishi. Like it does. No relationship. Oh, ishi means rock. Mm -hmm. What's missing from the kanji of ishi? Uh, the stem. Let me get my thing out. Oops. Out of eight. I like that. Good oh no, guess. that's the wrong you, one. That is a I, really good guess. So what you're missing is a square. It's like tomodachi. Hey. So just that line and a match. Okay, so now I'm actually having a little section on what is a relative clause, but first it's actually our mm -hmm. halfway point. So we'll be starting that in our next um. Hi. Bubble.